So when's the best time to start collecting Social Security? Well, that's like saying when you should start paying attention to the check engine light that's on the front of your dash. If you're anything like me, you've had at least one vehicle in your life where the check engine light turned on. And um, if you're like me, you ignored it. Or you just put a piece of black electrical tape over that check engine light. Because after all, if, if it's not there, it doesn't exist, right? Well, when it comes to Social Security, <laughs> Social Security is something that's very real. You've paid into Social Security all your life. And you know what? Your goal is the same as my goal. That's the same as the next door neighbor's goal. And that's to get as much from the Social Security system as is possible. That's not wrong. It's totally legal. And it's something that we all want for ourselves. But here's the problem. The problem is, is that we all have different, unique dynamics in our life. We've all worked for different lengths of time. We all have different life expectancies. We all have different work records with different earnings all throughout our life. Some have earned a lot. Some have learned, earned very, very little. My mother was a paralegal for a short period of time working for an attorney, didn't make a lot. And then she started her family. She worked her butt off, but she never got paid for it. So she didn't have much of a work career. She didn't have much of a social security check. You see, it's all different. And every single one of us are going to have to, at some point in our life, face this decision of when to turn on social security and start collecting it. Well, what is the magic answer? The magic answer is that there isn't one. So I'm going to give you a few basics and then I'm going to give you a few tips. The first thing that we have to keep in mind is that Social Security is something that is very fluid. It changes all throughout the course of time. It provides us a benefit if we draw it early at 62. It provides us 100% of our benefit if we draw it at full retirement age. And that could be 66, 67, or somewhere in between. And it gives us a maximum benefit if we live to age 70. But the big 800-pound gorilla in the room is, well, when's the most ideal time? And the best answer to that question is, well, you know what? Tell me exactly when you're going to die. Because you see, the longer you live, the more you collect benefits. That's not a news flash. All of us can figure that out. But you see, Social Security is designed in such a way where there is so many different facets that people tend to forget or they just simply don't understand the basic rules. So I'm going to help you out. The first thing is, is that 62 is the earliest benefit age that you can start to draw. And we'll say that 66 is your full retirement age. That's when you're going to get 100% of the benefit. If you start at 62, you're going to give up anywhere between a fourth to literally a third of your benefits. Why? Because the Social Security system is compensating for how long you might live. Think of it in the form of a pension. If a law enforcement officer retires at the age of 55 and turns on his pension, he's not going to get nearly as much benefit than the law enforcement officer that waited till he was 65 to retire and turn on his pension. It's all based upon life expectancy. And so as a result, when we read these articles that say that there's 300, 400, 500, 600 ways of drawing Social Security, they're not blowing smoke. They're absolutely correct because there is so many different variables and ways that we can draw a Social Security benefit. So the first simple answer is if you want more from the Social Security system, wait longer. Now, if you're unhealthy, if you're sick, if you know that you're not going to have a long life expectancy, then I have absolutely zero problem with my clients drawing Social Security benefits earlier because they're obviously not going to live as long to be able to enjoy those benefits. But what if you're kind of the opposite of that? What if all the people in your side of the family are living into their late 80s and early 90s and gosh, maybe even got, you know, Aunt Fatty and Aunt Fatty is living until she's like 105? Well, then you might want to consider delaying Social Security until you're much older. Now, what do I mean by that? You see, from full retirement age, which could be 66, 67, or somewhere in between, 
you're in a position where now the Social Security system begins rewarding you for waiting to draw the Social Security benefits. They increase your benefits by 8% every single year, and that compounds over the course of time. So you're going to get more. But then we have to ask this question. Well, Matthew, if I began drawing Social Security benefits at 62 versus, say, my next-door neighbor who began drawing Social Security at 70, who's going to win? Where's that break-even point? Well, that break-even point is pretty simple. It's going to be somewhere between age 78 and age 82. It really depends upon when you begin drawing those benefits. Now, is there some considerations as to when you may want to start drawing Social Security to get the maximum benefit? Of course there is. The first is if you need the money. If you need the money, then you want to start drawing the benefits. Number two, if you know that you're going to live longer, well, then maybe you want to delay the benefits so you get more later on. Another dynamic is going to be for the surviving spouse. So if, say, males in general tend to earn more for their working career and women tend to earn less because they're taking care of children and raising a family, if women tend to outlive their counterparts, then maybe we want to consider waiting to draw our Social Security as men so that we can then pass on a bigger Social Security benefit to our surviving spouse. You know, the statistic is pretty staggering. 82% of men that pass away, pass away married. 85% of women that pass away, pass away single. What does that mean? It means that women live longer. So if we want to be able to take care of our spouse, if that's a consideration for us, then what we want to do is we want to be able to potentially delay taking our benefit, maybe not to age 70. Maybe you just wait to full retirement age, so you get 100% of your check. Maybe you wait to 67 or 68, so you can get a couple of delayed credits in there, and you can make 8 to 16% more benefit. But the reality is, is that above all, it is so important to sit down and actually do a calculation. Now, the Social Security website provides plenty of calculations, but their calculators aren't the very best. That's the reason, as a financial advisor and fiduciary, many, many years ago, in a galaxy far, far away, I decided that if my emphasis was going to be to help individuals take what they've saved and turn it into an income stream for them, then I needed to be absolutely as knowledgeable as possible and as educated as possible with regards to Social Security benefits. And so I invested a vast sum of money into some sophisticated software that would allow me to be able to calculate different scenarios for Social Security. Scenarios that would allow us to be able to calculate the cost of living increase that takes place with Social Security. Whereas the cost of living goes up, Social Security goes up. The calculators within the Social Security system don't have that capability. Number two, taking a look at what you've saved for retirement and using that in addition to your Social Security calculation. Because you see, if you've earned and saved a good amount of money for retirement, if you know that you have a long life expectancy, but you really aren't certain how you're going to live without that check after you retire, well now, maybe considering learning how to take what you've saved and turn it into income so you can draw income off from that nest egg while you're waiting to draw Social Security is a wonderful approach. It allows you to be able to not only take advantage of the nest egg, it allows you to not only keep the nest egg safer, because here's the irony, if you want more income from what you've saved, you have to reduce your risk by looking at more income producing investments than growth investments, and then using that income so that you can get more from the Social Security system later on. If you're confused by all of this, then I'm going to encourage you to first and foremost take heart and realize that everyone that's gone before you has had to go through this same exact thing. Now granted, the Social Security system wants all of us to turn our Social Security benefits on sooner rather than later. They say, look at all the income you're missing out on. And that's a plausible argument. 
But the reality is, is that it's also easier on them. It's easier on their system if you draw early, because this means that they won't have to pay you as much. They know the statistics of life expectancy. So when it comes to drawing Social Security, please realize that it's not just one simple decision. It's simply one spoke in your wheel of retirement. And the goal is to help align what you're doing today with your investments and how you're turning those investments into income for yourself in addition to making a correct decision for Social Security. So hopefully today's video gave you some of the basics of what you need to know when it comes to turning on that Social Security. And if there's anything I can do to help, please do not hesitate to reach out and to contact me. I will do everything that I can to help you identify some of what may be the more beneficial approaches to drawing your Social Security benefits. Until next time, remember, it's up to you to make today a great day. Thanks so much for watching.